This video is an introduction to Voice Meter Potato. I'm just going to be going over the main features of the program. I won't be going into the setup. I'll be covering that in future videos. So look out for those. With that said, let's get on with it. Okay, so let's start by just taking a look at the basic overlay. Um, now I've just grabbed a copy of this in the snippet sketch tool in Windows. Uh, and I'm just going to use this to just outline what the different areas do. So let's just, I'm just going to start by putting a little, this line down here. What we can simply say is this side is the input and this side is the output. Okay. And we can further break this down into the virtual side and the physical side. As you see, this is clearly separated down here. So this is physical and this is virtual. And I'll go into the difference between those in a minute. And we have the same over here. So we have five physical input devices, five physical output devices, three virtual input devices and three virtual output devices. Okay. So I'm just going through some of the buttons. These, these buttons determine where you send each channel to and all of your inputs can be sent to any of your outputs and they can all be sent simultaneously to any combination. Uh, and I'm going to do a separate video on routing, which is um, what this is about. It can get quite convoluted, so I'm not going to touch on it too much here, but basic indication these A1 to A5 is sent to your physical ones set up here and your B1 to 3 are set to your virtuals. Mono, in this case, see, I've got this microphone on mono. If I undo that, you'll see it only goes on the left channel. See so only hear it on my left ear. Solo just sets so all the other channels are turned off, except for the, that one. And mute, well, mutes it. Um, just so you can see, my webcam is actually listening to me here. Um, it's not sent anywhere, so it's not been recorded. Uh, but I can just mute that and it disappears. It just still shows a signal there, but it doesn't get sent anywhere. There's some of these more fancy bits and bobs, which I don't really use. The ones you may use is the gate. The gate sets a level beneath which the sound doesn't come through. So if you've got the, your computer humming in the background and your keyboard clicking, your mouse clicking, you don't want that to come through. But if you start talking, you want it to, you want it to open, open the gate basically, and you can vary that the higher you put it the higher the volume will need to be to open the gate now, it doesn't filter the sound below so once the gates open all of the audio comes through so you might be able to hear a bit of my background noise when i'm talking but if i stop talking it should have gone silent and you can set one of those up for each of the separate channels okay uh compressor has a compressor here so simply put a compressor makes the quietest and loudest sounds closer together in volume uh, that's a really poor explanation of what it does but that's my basic understanding the rest of these things i'm not really that i'm not really that great on this you if you move this around if you can listen back to yourself which you can do by sending your own microphone to your own headset and you move this around you'll find uh you'll find that it starts making you sound different like in one corner you sound like you're you're on a really echoey old 80s phone over here we have um this is just showing this stream steam client thing here any different application you route to either one can be independently controlled by the volume here they're all going through one channel but you can you can mix the volume of different applications i don't tend to use that uh, very much, but it's there if you need it. What I haven't mentioned is these faders. So you can turn up and down. This just reduces the volume of each channel. Um, you can right click on it and set it to whatever you want. Um, you give it a bit of boost if you push it up, it goes red. Uh, and you can mix them. So you can mix different volumes on your inputs, and then you can mix different volumes on your output. On this side, you've got 
mute again as of so you can mute your channels uh, you've got mono to down mix it to mono which is useful if you don't want to do it over there uh, you've got uh, the EQ so that turns the EQ on if you right click it you get into a EQ menu you know again I'm, it's not the sort of thing I'm very good at so but you can like do like na narrow cuts and different shaped things here um, you can control the frequency is that so for example if I do this cut here and then I move that around it moves where that cut it's taking place by rolling up up and down you can't like just grab it like you can in audition but it is more it is more flexible than the than like you get on a physical mixer where you can just move specific frequencies turn that off so you can mess around with that anyway I've not had much luck messing around with that really um, I've tried to follow some guys, but I, it never really seems to, to work for me. Okay, so a little bit about VBAN. Uh, VBAN sends audio over the local network. So if I go in here, click on that button, I've got it switched on. You can just toggle it on and off there. Um, now this computer, you see it's listed twice as an outgoing stream and an incoming stream. This is another computer on my local network. And... I can send an audio signal and receive one from that computer. So how I use this is late at night when the little one's asleep and me and my wife want to play a game. She's got my, my computer's IP address on her on her version and I've got her so she can hear me and I can hear her and we can both wear our headsets. And then it comes through the network. It's quite it's quite good. There's a tiny amount of latency but it's it's really not a problem if you were in a different room it wouldn't be a problem at all but if you sat next to each other and you can sort of hear a low voice but it is useful it is useful when you've got loud game noise as well so you're not trying to struggle to hear over it um i'm gonna turn that off because i don't need it on at the moment and oh yes what i didn't show you is you just pick one of these channels here to control that there you see that that just tells you where you want it to arrive in a in five and that one is going out of a5 so i've configured those so her signal her voice comes in here and my voice goes out there and usefully you can use one of your spare hardware ones so you're not tying up your software ones even though there's no physical device attached to it, you actually can send it over that channel, which is quite useful because you've got five of these and you've only got three of these. And as a streamer, these these are more useful than these are. Really, you don't need five of these. Okay, so that's that's about it for the um, overview. Uh, I'm planning to do three more videos at least. Uh, one about routing, so talking about sending each of these channels over to these and how you can use that uh, i'm also going to show you a hardware setup and a software setup so the hardware setup for these devices and the software setup for these devices um, i'm hopefully hoping that breaking it down into those little bits means it's not too much in one go uh, th there's a lot of stuff if you try and put it all in in one video and i have tried in the past so anyway good luck with it um, give it a play and leave some comments below See you next time.